everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we've been hearing from you guys that you really wanna know what we have decided to grow in uh, the upcoming growing season. We mentioned in a video not too long ago that I had sat down and just come up with everything, the whole plan for growing. And so today we wanted to share with you our growing plan. I wanna tell you that I placed orders for all of our seeds, those that we needed to order. I placed them on January 7th and I quickly realized that I needed to tell you guys how important it is for you guys to get your orders in soon. There are many seed companies that are overwhelmed with orders. They're really backed up and their shipping is like out 30 days already. Right. Now we're not trying to fear monger. Whenever we do videos where we try to talk to you guys about some of the issues that are going on, we always get accused of fear mongering. That's not what we're doing. I don't think the seed companies are gonna run out of seeds. I don't think that anything like that's gonna happen. But it is a fact that when you go to many of the big seed suppliers' websites right now, they have right on their websites that they're running behind, that they're they're processing way more orders than normal and that uh, things are going to be a little bit different this year. So if you are one to start a lot of your seeds that's good, that are going to be planted in your gardens or if you take seedlings to farmers markets, it's really important for you guys to get your seeds ordered. If you're not finding what you like, you know, go to Walmart, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's while they right. have their seeds in stock. We've already bought seeds from Walmart. We bought some seeds from Lowe's just because we're just looking everywhere for what we want to grow. Right. So, yeah, don't rule that out because if you can find them somewhere to just buy, you, you're guaranteed to have them. So yeah. don't, don't think that buying seeds online is the only way to go. So even if this is way earlier than you normally buy your seeds, you guys got to get going. You got to get those seed orders in to make sure that you get them in the house, ready to be started at the time that you need to do that. Now, recently we've been getting a lot of questions and it happens every time, every year around this time, people want to know what have we decided to grow in our next garden next summer. Right, and where are we getting the seeds from? So right. we're gonna talk about this today, and I'm also gonna put a list of what we're growing, the varieties, and where we're buying them from in the description section below. So it's all in one place for you guys to refer back to later on. Now we actually have a few different things to worry about when it comes to starting seeds, because we actually grow, we actually grow gardens in three different areas at different times of the year. So the very first thing that we need to prepare for is inside of our greenhouse. And that starts way earlier than anything else around the homestead. Right now we have a bunch of lettuce, uh, radishes, spinach, cilantro, growing, kohlrabi. kohlrabi growing in there right now. They're doing so well. But in about a month is when we need to actually put a second planting or the spring planting in that greenhouse so we can have all those spring things ready. So the first thing that we're going to be planting in that greenhouse is cabbage. We absolutely love spring cabbage and our very favorite variety of cabbage is a quick growing cabbage called Golden Acres. And it is, it says 70 days here. Some of the packages you'll see 68 days, 62 days, but it really is a fast growing cabbage. And right. we've grown this for a couple years and absolutely love it. Right, yeah, this is a really good variety to grow early in the year uh, because if you can get kind of ahead of the cabbage moths, uh, it does really, really well. We also grow it under the row covers, which helps tremendously. And this just makes beautiful heads of cabbage. Right. This, these particular seeds we got from Lowe's, uh, but they have them available at some of the other right. sites. But it's a pretty common variety. Yeah, it's called Early Golden Acre, and I'll make sure that I put that on the list for you. We're gonna be growing cauliflower this year in the greenhouse. Um, I have two different varieties that we're gonna be trying. Now, some of our seeds haven't arrived yet from some of the companies that we ordered from. All of our Baker Creek seeds have uh, arrived, but there are a couple other companies that we ordered from this year, and they just haven't arrived yet. In the instance of cauliflower, I'm afraid I'm not gonna get the cauliflower seed that I want in time to plant for the greenhouse, so I actually did pick up a, a packet of seeds, the Early Snowball X at Lowe's. This is a really good variety, but I'm also waiting on snow crown cauliflower that we may be also planting. Right. And cauliflower is one of those things that we're going to do in the greenhouse, but then a little later in the spring, we'll also do it out in the main garden. Yeah, we so, like 
cauliflower a lot. And it grows really well here. It grows well. Uh, we love to pickle it and can it. We also like to uh, put some in the freezer. So we just want to grow a lot of it because we want to eat a lot of it. Right. Next up is another round of lettuces. We have a variety of lettuces in the greenhouse right now. Just a ton of them, maybe 10 or 12 varieties, all from Baker Creek. A really good mix, so we're gonna just plant those again. We're actually gonna grow lettuce this spring in those big buckets, those big tubs that you've seen us use before. That way we can save more growing space in the actual um, raised bed for other plants that we wanna put in there. Now another thing that we're going to be growing in the greenhouse this spring or even you know later this winter is kohlrabi. Uh, kohlrabi is one of my favorite things to eat. I actually just like to slice it up, eat it raw with some salt on it. Uh, we're going to be doing two different kinds. Uh, we're going to do some of this purple kohlrabi, which actually one of our subscribers sent us some seeds. And then we also got some uh, from Baker Creek with our order. So uh, we got lots of seed for the purple kohlrabi. And then we're also going to be doing just more of a standard white kohlrabi. The one that we're doing is just called Delicacy White. Um, kohlrabi is just one of those things that where I grew up in Wisconsin, we grew it every year. It grows really well in colder weather. And uh, so for me, I just love it. It's just one of those things that kind of reminds me of being a kid. Also in the greenhouse, we're gonna be doing two different kinds of kale. Our youngest daughter, Samantha, loves these types of kale, kind of like a dinosaur kale. And there are two of them. One I got from Lowe's called uh, Lacinato. And then one for, from Baker Creek called uh, Nero di Toscana. So we'll probably do these in buckets. And then our greenhouse garden is never complete without doing a good patch of turnips as well. We love turnips. They grow really well here. Again, it's one of those things that does really well while the weather is still pretty cold. Uh, so we just do a standard purple top turnip. Uh, we eat the greens and we eat the turnip part, uh, depending on where you're from. Some people only eat one part or the other. We love both. So they are a great thing here on the homestead. We have sugar snap peas that we're gonna be growing also. I think I'm gonna be trying them in tubs as well. We like to be able to eat the entire pod with the peas inside. So this year we're doing the sugar snap peas. I got these from Lowe's and sugar daddy peas from Baker Creek. We're also starting collards in the greenhouse. We're also gonna be doing them in the garden in the spring. Right. Yeah, we love collards. The Georgia Southern, uh, the Creole is pretty standard variety. We got these from Baker Creek. Those are gonna do so well. We're gonna do another round of cilantro. We have cilantro growing right now. And one thing that I really discovered uh, last year was that if you grow a bunch of cilantro and you blend it up and freeze it in uh, ice cube trays, then you have that ready for when you're making salsa in the summer. The right. reason that's such an amazing thing is that uh, cilantro doesn't do well in the heat. Right. So when it's time to harvest your um, tomatoes to make salsa, there's no cilantro to be found except in the grocery store. Right. So growing a bunch of it in the cooler weather and freezing it is a fantastic thing. Yeah, in the past we've always tried to do cilantro like early, early spring, but then it seems to get too hot too fast. So this last year or this year, we actually planted it in the fall and we have beautiful cilantro right now in the greenhouse growing all winter. I, I'm amazed. I didn't think it would do well, you know, in the coldest part of the winter, but it's it's doing really well. Okay, so moving on uh, to our big gardens here by our house. We have two big gardens and we do mostly summer growing, uh, but this coming year we're going to grow just a couple spring things because we want a lot of it. Right. Now one of them I already talked about a little while ago and that is the cauliflower. We are going to plant some cauliflower in the greenhouse because we can get that started super early, but then we're also going to be doing one 50 foot row of cauliflower in the garden as well. Again, we just love cauliflower. Uh, it's, it's good baked, it's good steamed, it's good raw. I mean, we just eat it in so many ways and it does so well here as long as you keep it under a row cover and grow it while it's still pretty cool outside. Right. We're gonna add some more collards uh, because we love them so much. So the one thing about the cauliflower is that right as soon as it's done, we'll be able to rip it out of the ground and it will be the perfect time to plant other things that need to be planted when it's warm. Right. So like sweet potatoes. Okra. Okra, exactly. Uh, so we're still using that spot. We're not, we're not just wasting that space over right. the summer. Right. So moving along, then let's just talk really about summer plants and varieties. Right. 
Now this year we're actually expanding our summer garden, uh, our main garden, where I'm making it a, probably about 15 feet bigger than we'd had it last year, which would give us about three extra rows in the garden. Uh, if we didn't see that, we did a video recently where we tore out some of our old raised beds and that area is now gonna become part of the actual in-ground garden. Right, so let's start with the favorite thing that we absolutely love to grow, Kevin's absolute favorite thing to eat, and that is tomatoes. We have really been working over the last several years to just find those few varieties of tomatoes that do best for us. Best tomatoes for eating, best tomatoes for sauce, and the best cherry tomatoes. Right. Yeah, we've really, I think, narrowed it down over the last couple years. We've had some amazing tomato years the last few years, and it's because we've really stuck with a couple varieties that have done really well for us over time, and we're not really going to change much this year. We're going to stick with the same varieties that we know do really well in our area. Right. Most of what we grow for tomatoes are hybrid tomatoes, and that might surprise a lot of you, but we really like the fact that they're very consistent, they're... Uh, they're tolerant, uh, they're resistant to, to diseases, and they just give us a big harvest every year. Right, now the downside to growing hybrids is that we can't save seeds. We do need to order seeds every year. So we do try to grow some heirloom every year so that we can save seeds as well. So, I mean, we do try to cover our bases that way, but you know what, as long as we can order the seeds and we can get them, we're gonna stick with the varieties that we know do really well because for us, it's about production, it's about getting the most bang for our garden space, and that's what we need to do in order to grow a year's worth of food every year. I don't have the tomato seeds yet, I'm still waiting on them from uh, the company we order from, which is generally Totally Tomato. Uh, they have great seeds. So the slicers that we are going to grow this year are Jetstar, which is our absolute favorite, right. and a very similar um, tomato called Jet Setter. Right. Yeah, the Jet Star we've grown for years and years, I think, I mean, pretty much since we started gardening. And the Jet Setter we added just a couple years ago uh, based on recommendations from other people in our area that said they do really well here. Mm -hmm. And they're very similar to the Jet Star. So we, we try to do both of those each year, just in the off chance that maybe one has a bad year, the other one will pick up, you know, the slack. These tomatoes will be used for fresh eating for canning diced tomatoes, and for canning um, tomato juice. And for fresh eating. And for fresh eating, right out of the right. garden. I need to get a new salt shaker this year, I think. Yeah. I always keep a salt shaker in the garden with me because, you know, you gotta eat while you're out gardening. The second type of tomatoes that we're gonna be growing are sauce tomatoes. We use a ton of tomato sauce. Uh, pasta, soups, all kinds of things through the whole year. Right. And there are two varieties that we're going to be growing this year. The first one is Opalka, and the second one is Salvaterra's Select. Both right. of them are actually heirloom. Right. The Opalkas I got from Totally Tomato, and the Salvaterra Select I got from Seed Savers. Right. Yeah, both of those are varieties that we've done in the past, uh, you know, the last couple of years, and they do absolutely great for us. So, again, we're not going to change anything. Once we find varieties that we like, uh, that's what we're sticking with because, again, it's all about getting the most out of the garden space that we have. The one thing I really like about both of these types of tomatoes is they grow actually really big in comparison to, like, the Romas that you would um, grow or buy at the store. They're nice big, meaty tomatoes, you get a right. lot of bang for your buck. Right. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the garden is never complete without cherry tomatoes. What I like to do is plant one cherry tomato plant at the end of each row in the garden. So as I'm working out in the garden, when I get to the end of a row, I can stop for a good 15, 20 minutes and have <laughs> as many cherry tomatoes as I want. Maybe not quite that long, but a good snack. You know, you gotta have a good snack. So this year we're doing two varieties of cherry tomatoes. We've tried so many cherry tomatoes over the years. I mean, probably 25, 30 different varieties. And we always have the same problem. And that is that when they get into the heat of the summer and then we get a bunch of rain, they crack so easily and so many of them have to be wasted. So we've come up with two varieties that we've grown now. This will be the third year that we've grown them and they're fairly crack resistant. We have very few of them that crack. The first one is called Gardener's Sweetheart, 
Now that's actually an heirloom cherry tomato. And then the second one is called Juliet. That one is a hybrid and they both do really, really well. The Juliet seeds we ended up getting from Totally Tomato, uh, but the Gardener's Sweetheart was a little bit harder to find. I ended up ordering those from Fedco. Now the tomatoes obviously are my favorite part of the garden. If you've seen any of our gardening videos in the past, but there's something that's always Sarah's favorite and that is peppers. We're not going super crazy with a ton of varieties of peppers this year. We're, we're going to be on the, the conservative side. But the bell peppers we're going to be uh, growing this year are my favorite. I was able to find seed this year. Last year I couldn't find seed. Uh, it is called Emerald Giant. And I found that this year from Burpee of all places. I've never ordered mm. from them before, but I decided to just do it this year and order from Burpee. So Emerald Giant it is. They're just really big, nice, blocky, juicy, high producers. Right. Great for like stuffed peppers. I mean, it and is. great just for dicing up and freezing. Right, um, and in the freeze dryer. Right. Yeah, so we're gonna plant a lot of those this year. Um, last year was the first year we planted lunchbox peppers. They're kind of like mini, not bells, but long, thin, sweet peppers. And we're gonna try them again this year because Kevin's mom loves them. Right. And she loves them in her air fryer and she could eat just a bunch of them at a time. So we're going to start some of those. We'll grow them on our garden. She'll grow them on hers. It'll just be a blast. Now when it comes to spicy peppers, there's one variety of jalapeno that we grow every single year. It's called Craig's Grande Jalapeno. Uh, it comes from Baker Creek and we just absolutely love it. It's just one of those varieties that, you know, you end up with way more peppers than you can imagine. I mean, the plants are just absolutely loaded. Along with the jalapenos though, we always like to grow one not spicy jalapeno from Baker Creek called Natapeno. Uh, it tastes exactly like a jalapeno pepper, but no heat at all. So if you have someone in your family who maybe doesn't like spicy things, but still wants to do the jalapeno poppers or something like that, the Natapenos are the great way to go. So uh, I would highly recommend those. And then the other really spicy pepper that really we're going to be doing spicy. this year, uh, we haven't done in a couple of years because when you do these, they just pr they make more than you can possibly use. Uh, that's Tabasco peppers. Uh, we had a phenomenal year with Tabasco peppers a couple of years ago, so we haven't done them in a while, but it's time to make some more homemade Tabasco sauce this year. So we're going to be doing a few plants of the Tabasco peppers. And the last pepper that we're going to be growing this year is my all-time favorite pepper of the whole world. And that is Adjvarsky peppers. It's a sweet red roasting pepper that just is so amazing. I love it so much. I had a hard time finding seed this year, but I'm so happy that last year I saved seed from the Adjvarsky peppers. So I'm going to have plenty to plant in the garden. Now, as long as Sarah's talking about saving seeds, there are a couple other things that we've saved seeds from from last year so that we didn't have to buy them this year. Uh, the first is okra. Uh, we always save our own seed from okra because it's so easy to save. Just save a few pods at the end of the season, let them dry out. Uh, we always do the Clemson Spineless. I've tried other varieties of okra. I'll be honest, the Clemson Spineless is just my absolute favorite. They're easy to know when to pick. They don't get uh, real tough super fast. And so we're just sticking with those again this year. And then the other thing that we saved seeds from last year for this year is our green beans. This isn't all of what we have. We saved a lot more. So green beans, we always do the contender bush green beans. Uh, so we've got plenty of those to plant as well. And then the final thing that we saved seeds for is our Canada crookneck squash. Uh, we grew these last year. They're like a butternut squash, but a little bit bigger and they are awesome. There's we actually still have quite a few of them down in the cellar and they are doing great. Uh, we're amazed at, I mean, they're almost just as good as the day we picked them. So uh, we're able to eat those all winter long. This year we're growing cucumbers again. We have an absolute favorite that we grow every year and it's the Market Moor. Uh, this is uh, from Baker Creek Market Moor 76. It's a great slicer, very productive. And this year we're gonna try a new cucumber to us, a pickling cucumber called Chicago Pickling. Right, a lot of you have recommended this one in the past, so uh, we're gonna give it a try this year and see how we like it. Yeah. For onions this year, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We've never tried uh, starting onions from seed. We normally buy the little bulbs from our local farm store and plant them that way, so 
Sarah wants to try doing onion seeds this year. It's a little scary to me, but she thinks that we can handle it. Yeah, we're gonna try the variety called Candy. Now it's a hybrid, uh, but we've heard really great things about it. Yeah, one of our neighbors grows it every year and I can tell you, we go down there, sometimes they're harvesting onions. I mean, they're like, yeah. they're huge, so. Yeah, and uh, luckily the company Totally Tomato, where we get our tomato seeds from, they offer the candy onion seeds. So we right. got those as soon as they arrive, we're gonna be starting them because it takes a long time um, in January or early February is when you really wanna start those. So that'll be excited. That'll be exciting to get some seeds started. This year we're going to plant the Kennebec potatoes again. We get those seed potatoes from our local farm store. Right, yeah, it's a variety that does really well here. We did, we did them last year. Uh, we thought that they did really well, and so we're gonna do them again this year. Right, and sweet potatoes we're gonna grow again this year. We have some still good in the cellar. Hopefully they'll still hang on and we'll be able to use those to um, grow our slips. Uh, last year we grew jewel and garnet, and this year we'll do the same thing as long as they're still good, or if we can find them at um, the local organic food store. That's where, right. we, that's where we got our uh, sweet potatoes last year to start the slips from. Right, yeah, starting your own sweet potato slips is so easy. Yeah. And I mean, we go to the store, if you don't have some already saved from the previous year, go to your local organic store. They have to be organic, because the ones in the regular store, a lot of times they'll spray them with something that stops them from sprouting. So get some organic ones, and I mean, we do like two of each variety, gives us all the slips that we yeah. need for the entire garden. And the last type of veggies that we're gonna be growing in our main garden are tomatillos. Right. Now we did green tomatillos last year. We're still learning, okay? We right. weren't 100% like great growers of the tomatillos last year. But, but they were fun to grow and they did really well. Yeah, yeah, so we're still learning. But this year I decided that may, wouldn't it be fun to do purple tomatillos? Uh, Baker Creek had these purple tomatillos and I thought that would be really awesome. So we're gonna try those. So that's the last thing in our main summer garden. Now we do have a second summer garden that we're gonna be planting. Right, but we only plant two things in the entire garden. And we're actually gonna expand that garden this year as well. The first thing that we grow in that garden is watermelon. We love to grow watermelon. Right. We love to eat watermelon. All the animals like watermelon. Uh, so last year we grew two 50 foot rows of watermelon. It was a huge success. We're going to grow the strawberry watermelon again, uh, which is a nice big watermelon. This will be like the fourth year, I think, we're growing right. strawberry watermelon. Yeah, but, they get big. Some of them get almost 30 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And there's a new variety we're going to be planting this year that doesn't have many seeds in it. Yeah, it, the one downside to the strawberry is that it has a lot of seeds. So I did some looking around at different varieties that may not have as many seeds, and we came across a watermelon called Sweet Dakota Rose, and I found those on the Fedco seed website. So we're gonna plant one row of those. We love watermelons, but we want to start freeze drying watermelon because right. we heard it tastes like candy, but it is a huge pain to pick out all of those seeds. So right. fingers crossed on this new variety that we're going to be growing. Right. And then the other thing that we grow in this garden is our sweet corn. Now last year we did a pretty decent sized patch of sweet corn. We grew 15 50 foot rows. And a lot of you guys told us we were crazy that that was going to be way too much sweet corn. Uh, but to be honest, we're going to plant more this year because it it was a good it was a good amount of sweet corn. And I agree that if all we were growing it for was fresh eating, it would have been way too much. But because we want to can it so we can have it all year, uh, it wasn't quite enough. We still have some. We're still eating on it, but it's not going to make it until sweet, sweet corn season again next year. So we're gonna probably grow maybe 25 rows this year, but we're gonna do it just a little different. Last year we planted all 15 rows at once. And for those of you who haven't grown sweet corn, once it's ready to pick, you have about five days to pick all of it that you've planted. So this year we're gonna stagger plant. We're gonna plant maybe three or four rows, then wait a week or two, plant another three or four rows. And we're gonna do that because here in Missouri, we can plant, it's a long growing season right. for, for sweet corn, so we can get it spread out so it's not so much work all at once. And we're gonna stick with the same variety of sweet corn that we did last year, which is the peaches and cream. Uh, 
it was it was amazing. It was. I mean, it was so, so good. good. So why change something that was so good? We can find that seed at our local farm store. And so right. that's what we plan on doing. Yeah, and in big packages. Right, exactly. We can get it in big quantities, so right. that's nice. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be growing in most of our gardens. That's really the food we're going to be growing for the spring and the summer. Do you but, think that was enough? I don't know. <laughs> I could probably add a few more things in there. We probably yeah. will actually by the time we get to growing season. We'll be like, oh, we need this and that and this and that. Right. But anyway, there are a couple other things that I want to tell you about. Uh, I will be growing some flowers this year. I don't really have a lot of time to dedicate to flowers. Uh, they're pretty and I always wish I have more time to plant things like that. But most of our energy is dedicated to the food that we're growing. But this year we're going to be uh, growing marigolds, which are beneficial. They keep right. insects away, so I can uh, I can grow those and feel good that they're they're being beneficial to our harvest. Uh, we'll plant those in many different places, and they're pretty. I'll probably put some in pots. I'm going to be planting petunias. I think they're beautiful, and the few pots that I have around the homestead, they'll get some petunias. Pansies are one of my favorites and Baker Creek has some gorgeous varieties. Uh, they have this absolutely beautiful purple uh, pansy called Lake of Thun or Thune and these beautiful yellow ones uh, called Coronation Gold and together planting these together is going to be so beautiful. I love purple and yellow together. And then I'll also be planting some zinnias. I just have a ton of zinnia seeds just from years previous and those will pop up here and there just to add some color to the homestead. It'll be pretty. And then just quickly, I want to talk with you about some of the herbs we'll be planting. Now I have a lot of perennial herbs already around the homestead. Right. So uh, there isn't a whole lot that I need to plant from year to year, just the annuals. So basil will be planting and um, parsley, dill, um, chamomile, and I'm actually looking for ashwagandha seeds uh, to start some of those too. Everything else that we would possibly need as far as herbs, we already have because they're perennial. Right. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get a backache just thinking about all the stuff we have to plant this year. But I'm excited as well because it means we're gonna have another season of great, awesome food for our family. So you guys, have you started gathering your seeds for the upcoming growing season? Make sure you let us know in the comments section below what your favorite companies are to order seeds from. And hopefully that will give ideas to everybody else. We do have a few other things up our sleeves that we're working on for the springtime. We're not quite ready to share with you guys yet, but let's just say we may be doing even more growing than what we talked about today. So we'll be talking more to you guys about that in the next probably month or so. So we thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's a cold, wintry day. We actually have snow on the ground, which is rare for us. We're, but it's a great time to sit down and really start planning things out for the upcoming spring. It'll be here in no time. If you're enjoying our videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you are notified of our new videos that come out. And remember that the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos and all your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.